one other thing I just I just thought about as far as those moments before going on stage, in in ninety nine percent of the the finals that I've ever seen, and also in a lot of contests at other levels, contestants either remain hidden until they have been announced, or if they're at the front of the room getting mic'd, they'll they won't be making eye contact with the audience. And starting with the regional contest in '03, and also in in two thousand uh, in '02 the regional and the finals in '03. I made it the point of coming up, I'm, I'm mic'd, that's my moment, I can start making a connection right then. So I faced the audience and I looked, and I smiled and waved, I haven't been announced, the, the, the clock has not started. And so by the time I took the stage, I had already begun making the connection with those people. I, I saw other contestants in, in 03 look like they were almost trying to hide behind the, the camera stand. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I was like, no way. I'm standing out there right next to the stage. They know I'm next. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm like, hey, hey. I, I did everything except, hey, hey. I, I, that was the line I didn't cross. But that was a moment when your connection with the audience can begin if you take advantage of it. Like at, like at a professional speaking gig. If you're meeting people beforehand, your connection starts before you yeah. hit, hit the stage. So. Okay, guys, there's 36 hours left until the contest. <laughs> What advice do you have for the contestants? What should they be doing right now, between now and when they step on the stage? Great question. <laughs> well, this is advice we can give. We don't necessarily follow. <laughs> do as I <laughs> <we> say, <laughs> not as, as we do. do. Sleep. Yes. You will be 36. Uh -huh. You will yes. be sleep deprived. I'm sorry. Yeah. No matter what you try, and I don't recommend medication, but there's. You just can't sleep. I remember I was in Miami Beach, Florida. Could not sleep the night before the contest. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to practice my speech out loud to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing, I'm literally practicing my speech at the top of my lungs out to the ocean. Off in the distance, I see three people. And I'm getting closer to the hotel, they're getting closer to the hotel. We actually meet at the entrance of the hotel, as it turns out to be three other contestants. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They could not sleep either. They were wired, probably. Yeah, they were wired. But the, the reason they were practicing at that point was because they were with their families. And they said their families were literally driving them crazy. This is the only place they could practice in peace. Mm. And ironically enough, I had gotten into an argument with my wife, and unfortunately we're divorced now, but that's, that's another video. Yes. <laughs> But we got into the argument because I was so disappointed that she didn't come. I said, hey, you know, you need to come to this. And the, the debate was my son had actually won the starting job as a center on the high school football team. And the day I was competing was the first day that he was going to start. And the decision was made, like, you know what, we need to honor him. And so she just decided to stay back and root for him, which is the right decision to do. But I, looking back on it, I think it helped me. Because when I got to the hotel, literally, I practiced and rehearsed every single day. The hotel, the Fountain Blue Hotel, they actually uh, installed a, uh, uh, a video recorder. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to play v VHS videos hooked up to my TV for the previous nine years, the World Championship of Public Speaking. And I watched them over and over again. And I had, I had post-it notes on the wall, on mirrors, and I had... I had my, my, my fluorescent dots on the floor, mm -hmm. and, and I told the, the hotel staff, don't clean up my room. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine housekeeping? What's with the stuff? <laughs> I mean, Saturday, it was, it was not free. Yeah. Yeah. I should have taken a picture of it, but, yeah. I, but I did. But that was my experience. I, I would say the, the, in the moment standing up to it, obviously, s sleep when you can, and to piggyback onto something else Ed said, if you have family here, especially if you have children, ask other members of your family to completely be in charge of every aspect of their care, starting noon on Friday at least, so that you can collect yourself, so that you can kind of get in, in the zone, get your game face on, and, and get yourself mentally where you need to be, because every responsible parent is going to be concerned about their kids' safety, their welfare, are they entertained, and if other people, responsible people, responsible people that you know, can manage that, that's one less burden that you have to carry. And I think, too, I had great two great coaches, Mark Brown and David McElhaney, and they told me, okay, it's time to switch from coach to cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And now, as Ed Tate would say, a great speaker, um, <laughs> freeze, freeze the model. Yeah. Freeze the design. Freeze the design, mm -hmm. meaning don't make any changes now. Lock it down. Lock it down. 
now it's all about encouragement. One thing that I did is so many people were asking and offering to help, so I tried to find something that they could do. And the one thing that I think was really powerful is I said, I gave out my cell phone number and I said, everyone call me and leave me message, messages of inspiration. That is brilliant. And so before I went to bed, I listened to them, and the next morning I listened to them, wow. and it was it was awesome. But it also gave them something to do. People yeah. want to help you, right. so we've got to let them. We can't be no, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, yeah. no. Now is when they, they, they want to be part of your process exactly. and your experience. Yeah. Exactly. One thing I, I, I do want to I think emphasize, and we were fortunate enough to win the contest. Your self worth is not a function of you winning this contest. Mm. So I, I want to emphasize that. You are no less a person if you don't win. And think think about the odds. There's 25,000 to 35,000 people who compete and there's only one winner. There's only one winner. And you, so. have, you have a great point about NSA and the CSP. The, and the, the National Speakers Association, they have something called a CSP award. It's called the Certified Speaking Professional Award. It is. About 5%, excuse me, about 10% of professional speakers have attained this particular award. It takes approximately about five years to, to earn this particular award. And I, you know, I doubled that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's my point. It is easier to earn, everyone can earn a CSP. I would submit to you it's actually easier to earn a gold medal in the Olympics than it is to win the World Championship of Public Speaking because every year in the Olympics there are 310 gold medals which are given out. There's only one World Championship of Public Speaking. Now obviously it's not that easy in terms of the metaphor doesn't carry over, but everyone can earn a CSP in the, in the world of professional speaking. That's something that no matter what your skill level is, if you're in this industry for five years and you have a certain amount of speaking engagements, everyone can win. So again, I just want to emphasize the point. There's only one winner every year, and if you're one of the finalists, you're a winner, and if you competed in this competition, you, you're still a winner. It doesn't lessen you as a person, and you shouldn't judge or value your self-worth based on winning a piece of blue sight or not. Right. And there's uh, a myth out there that if you win, you instantly have a career, life is set, you get the Rolls Royce, you get the million dollar check. The Brinks truck didn't back up to your house and start unloading heavy bags? Not for another okay. week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. But, but, so I want to back up with Ed saying that anyone can be a professional speaker if you want to do it and learn the business side of speaking. And winning the trophy uh, means one thing, that you get more calls for free speeches than ever before. Yep. All just, the free speeches you can handle. There are, there are people <laughs> out there who've written books who want to be the world champion and think the trophy is the key. But more people would hire you because you're an author than because you're a world champion. Mm. Outside of Toastmasters, it just doesn't mean as much. It's a nice title. And, um, you know, you are every good bit as good as us, as classy as us. That's what There's I no tell difference. people. That's what I tell people. <laughs> I'm surprised you actually <laughs> are hanging out with us. Put me up that high, <laughs> to be honest. But you, you know, you've chosen to, to stick with your day job. Yeah, but it's not a day job thing. You're still a professional speaker. I, I have a mix of the speaking and my professional job that works for me in my situation. Yeah, and and you still earn a great fee when you're speaking. And this, this day and age is not the time to go jumping from a solid job. Yeah, <laughs> giving you a exactly. Comment.